Okay, let's begin. Hello, guys. Welcome to another session on D365 UG India platform. Today we are doing session number 31 on the topic how to migrate servers from on premises to Microsoft Azure. We will cover how to migrate your AX, Navision, or CRM environments to cloud. Uh, before I hand it over to Umesh, I'll do a quick group introduction. I'll talk about what's today's session about, what is uh, what are our upcoming session, and few housekeeping rules and disclaimers. So just to let everyone know, this session is being recorded and will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, which will be available for public viewing. So uh, if you uh, don't wish to be consent uh, to be part of a recorded session, then now is a good time to disconnect. All the views expressed in these sessions are totally based on the presenter's uh, experience. It does not represent view of Microsoft or their employer. Any takeaway from these sessions should be tested in a, a test environment before applying directly to the production environment. Uh, we use demo data and lab environments for these sessions. We do not use any real life uh, environments from the existing projects and we we encourage a respectful environment for our attendees and for the presenters. So please feel free to uh, engage on a chat in the chat window and uh, post your questions, uh, but please uh, be mindful and remain professional to everyone. Uh, OK, so a quick group introduction. So we launched almost two years back uh, with a view of creating a platform for people to uh, engage, connect, learn and grow with each other. So currently the group is being uh, run by three volunteers, myself, Umesh and Sathya. Uh, we all are based in Australia at the moment. We have we are getting good response, so thank you for supporting us. Keep supporting us. We have almost 2300 people uh, following us on LinkedIn and uh, helping us to drive this group forward. So big thanks to everyone. A quick glimpse on the sessions which we have done in past. So all the all these sessions are available on our YouTube channel for viewing. If you have missed any session or if any particular session sparks an interest, then feel free to check out these recordings on our YouTube channel. So today we will be talking about how to migrate servers from on premises to cloud in Microsoft Azure and our presenter is Umesh Pandit. Uh, so I'll hand it over to him now. Over to you, Umesh. Thank you, Rachit, for the wonderful introduction. Thank you uh, everyone for joining who is uh, taking pains to join at this time. Probably uh, uh, we are uh, from world like uh, uh, people are coming in from Sydney, uh, India, um, South Africa, uh, US and Canada. So welcome all even uh, UK, uh, the European countries. So welcome all once again. Uh, this is Umesh. I will just now share my screen and we'll get the ball rolling. Uh, today we are uh, talking about uh, the uh, hope my screen is visible now. Not yet. Yeah, now it is. Now it's okay. It is very visible. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, today's topic is how we can actually migrate our AX Navision CRM. That's the uh, core attraction of this session. But actually, you can migrate uh, a lot of uh, virtual machines uh, on any platform actually. So whether it can be .NET, whether it can be Java application, web servers, whatever it is, we can have. We have to actually plan it and then uh, shift it to Azure or move it to Azure. So this session is corely. Uh, I will tell you that it is actually migrating the servers. Um, since I am coming in from AX and Dynamics background, Navision Alliance also have done CRM also done. So it will be around servers. And in case you have any specific question, please do ask me. I will definitely try to answer it. This is my uh, this is my LinkedIn handle. You can uh, definitely follow me. Uh, connection request definitely I would uh, not encourage because I have already reached 30k connections. Thank you for following and connection with me. Um, so that's the introduction. Normally, when we talk about any uh, application which we want to move around uh, Azure, uh, as we everyone know that Azure is actually the private cloud. Uh, sorry, public cloud. And it can actually work as a private cloud as well in case you are moving your applications to uh, like in like uh, like government bodies are moving uh, their uh, uh, their workloads to Azure, which is actually a private uh, cloud for them uh, called as the uh, government cloud. OK, so uh, 
it can be any server it can be any technology which you want to move you just need to determine a uh, few things we will be going through uh, those terminologies and i will try to explain you uh, first of all the question arises that why should we migrate okay because i see a lot of people they still want to continue ax in uh, a typical on premises world or they want to don't want to move uh, dynamics ax or uh, crm or navigation those people who have just joined and they don't know about the dynamics application uh, navigation or a crm they are all erp and uh, er uh, erp and crm from microsoft it can be any application okay so it can be a, it can be a dot net it can be your web server it can be a database it can be Linux servers, it can be Unix servers, it can be Red Hat servers, it can be Oracle servers, which are actually hosted on Linux or Unix machines, okay? So uh, why we should consider Azure migration? Uh, the uh, core idea is that it has the scalability, it has flexibility, it has cost, it is very cost effective, it is global reach, it has uh, security and compliance inbuilt. So what I have seen as an cost effective, uh, during my projects, I have learned that uh, people are giving a lot of amount to data centers to host their uh, virtual machines, which is costing them a lot. Again, uh, it is backed up by infrastructure and a lot of uh, service desk operations also happens within that to support the complete data center. While you migrate to Azure, it actually gives you a lot of benefit around the uh, costing, okay? So in case you don't need those machines for, the, uh, for, you, for your uh, developers, just shut it down or maybe you, you can have start stop script to start it on weekly basis and on the weekend it is shut down, no extra cost to your uh, company. Similarly, you can use uh, the uh, spot, um, Azure spot as well. Uh, Azure spot is something which uh, gives you, Microsoft gives you a discount in case you, are, you have taken Microsoft Azure spot and then you don't use it, then it can be shared, the infrastructure will be shared by someone in the public cloud and you will get the discount out of it. Okay, so that's how it works. And also you can go for reserve instances. Okay, so just giving you an overview of Azure, how it works. Uh, even for the resu uh, reserve instances, people think that if we are tied up with some virtual machine, we can't actually uh, uh, build up um, uh, the other applications on it. Yes, you can build it. Let's suppose you started building up some web services. And later on, you think that, okay, you don't want to use it for the web services. Now you want to use it for database. Definitely delete the virtual machine, create the same set of virtual machine, and then you are good to go. Okay, so what could be the migration strategies? Okay, so it can be rehost, which the core factor we are looking for today. Uh, we will be more focused on today's of the rehost, which is called lift and shift. We will move application as is in Azure virtual machine with the minimal changes in the code. Uh, Okay, then the second is about refactor. Basically, you need to refactor uh, as a re-platform. Uh, you can optimize your application for Azure services while making minor code changes. Okay, so it can be done with the help of minor code changes. This applies to .NET uh, versions uh, platform, or it can be focused on uh, the Java or the web services, which has been running on your on-premises servers. You can also re-architect. You can rebuild the complete infrastructure in Azure, and then uh, like in Azure native services for maximum benefit. Similarly, you can replace like drop and shop. Okay, Re replace means you can replace the existing application with Azure Marketplace solution. So you you actually have a cutoff date. Okay, uh, like you stop all the services and then you actually build up your environment. Once the cutoff date is arrived, you just hop on to your new machines, which is on cloud. Okay, you can also retire. Uh, the uh, applications, in case those applications are very legacy, taking a lot of money, maybe uh, you want to host application for a single sign-on and for that infrastructure, you are wasting a lot of money. What you can do that time, you can decommission it and you can remap it on Azure. What could be the typical uh, migration steps? We'll come to uh, Azure shortly. Give me a few minutes. Uh, what could be the migration steps? Migration steps on an on an highly high level basis, it can be assessment, it can be planning, it can be migration, testing, optimization, validation, go live and post migration stops. Okay, so we will discuss this more in depth uh, in case we have time today. I will show you the complete process uh, 
today uh, with the assessment, planning, migration, testing, optimization, validation, go live and post migration task. What could be the migration uh, tools? Migration tool, the biggest migration tool which Microsoft is using now is Azure Migrate. It is a central hub for assessment, migration, providing insights into your on-premises workload. Azure Site Recovery is also an another option which gives you the replication of on-premises uh, workloads to Azure for disaster recovery and migration. You can also use the uh, Azure database migration services. Okay, This is used for mainly on the Azure databases for MySQL or uh, PostgreSQL. Okay, You can also use the Azure data box. Azure data box is, let's suppose you have a typical data center uh, in in maybe uh, GCC. Now you uh, you are having a physical data. Now you want to move that data completely to Azure and that is more terabyte. And if you start now uploading, it might take five years to upload in Azure. So you don't have to wait five years. Uh, then what you need to do, you need to contact Microsoft, ask them that, that we have this much of data. Uh, they will come and collect the data and upload it to, upload it to the Azure from the nearest data center. That's how it has can be done, it's achieved very easily. Uh, what could be the best practices? Uh, I think we can start uh, from the small, uh, like you have a pilot process, maybe less critical workload to gain the experience. Then we can have the assessment, go for security, optimization and training. So we'll now move on to the planning. Okay, so uh, in case you have any doubt, please, uh, you can stop me, you can ask me, definitely that questions are welcomed. Now we'll go for the plan, okay? Though, so the first comes into the picture, the planning about the list of the services. How much servers you want to migrate? What are their domain name? What are their passwords? Uh, what is the Hyper-V host name and details? Okay, so some companies are hosting multiple uh, V host and on top of virtual machine, uh, on top of virtual machine as an Hyper-V hypervisor. Hypervisor is basically Hyper-V those who are seeing this Hyper-V for the first time, Hyper-V is the virtualization software, okay? It is it is quite similar to uh, VMware. It is also similar to Oracle Virtual Box. Uh, I think these three is a quite example. Hyper is basically Hyper-V is from Microsoft. VMware is from the VMware company and uh, Oracle Virtual Box is from Oracle, okay? Now you need to also take care of the bandwidth. Okay, what bandwidth it will be using. You don't have to calculate it, but I will tell you what's the escape path. Uh, we have the downtime. We need to understand about the downtime while you migrate, what could be the downtime, maybe half an hour, one hour, depending upon the uh, uh, depending upon the size of the disk you have. Okay, then we have the target as your reason. You need to also aware. So let's suppose you're migrating your services uh, from India, uh, maybe central India or maybe South India to maybe you want to migrate to uh, North India or maybe Geo Delhi or Geo Mumbai. Okay, you might be aware that Azure also is providing services with the help of the Geo on their Geo data centers. Okay, so that's a new uh, thing which has been recently launched. Uh, once you have the target Azure region, that you are the, you are in a good position that time. Now also you should have a local username and the password. Why local name? username and the password and why we have used domain username and the password. So you might be aware that a lot of applications may be like uh, your ERP, your CRM, your .NET application, they can be linked to the domain controller. Okay, you know, you might be knowing what domain controller is and in Azure we have Azure Active Directory. So Active Directory is on-premises and Azure Active Directory is on cloud. Now, when we talk about this two, what happens is uh, while migrating, okay, Always think while you do a replicate, while you press the button for replicate, I will show you in Azure how it works. When you press the uh, button for replicate, you need to absolutely sure that you have created a local admin account with a proper password and password is set to never expire. Okay, these are the like in service account you create in older old, old school days. Once your systems is migrated, the problem will occur as a uh, public IP. There will be just a internal IP. So you will be shocked to see uh, that it is just giving you public, uh, just giving you a private IP and private IP, IP cannot be reached from the public internet. Okay, it has to be having a on-premises systems with the same IP range, the default IP range or maybe same DNS, then only you can reach it. Once we have the public IP, we will also configure our NSG. 
Okay, so any doubt in our planning? All good? Yeah. Okay. I see one uh, one comment from Neeraj is around the reason to migrate is that we may miss the bus of generative AI. So I think that's a good point. That's another good reason to migrate to cloud. <laughs> yes, definitely. So AI is definitely playing a very vital role in our day-to-day uh, -day life as well as in Azure. Uh, what I see, uh, there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, alerts, a lot of uh, information which has been shared um, uh, by Azure with the help of the AI and machine learning. So it's, it's it's very good. Okay, so we'll move ahead with the content. Okay, so now I will try to showcase you about the. Uh, Azure, uh, this is my local laptop. Okay, this is my Hyper V hypervisor machine, which is Hyper V Manager. The laptop name, which I kept as a laptop AUS, and then I created my AD services, AD, AD server, AX 2009, AX 2012, uh, Business Central Development Machine, Finance and Operation, also machine I have tested, and Navision 2013. I wanted to test someone, some of them. CRM I have not tested here, but uh, definitely uh, on an ongoing project i have definitely done that migration so 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 give you the little bit of understanding we'll see uh, we'll try to move ahead with the content okay now uh, moving ahead uh, if you see these are the servers this is the hyper uh, hyper v manager those who are looking this hyper manager hyper v manager for the first time remember this Hyper-V manager will only work on operating system which is having professional licenses okay on the home uh, basic it won't work okay so make sure that if you are on uh, if you are on a home edition of windows 10 or 11 you need to change the licenses you don't need to you don't need to format it you don't need to reinstall anything you just need to update the licenses and then you are good to go first thing the second thing is in case uh, you, you have to understand about your hardware also okay so this is something which i have done on my laptop but when it comes to an on premises system your machine your lot of infrastructure will be on either on hyper v and it can be on your uh, vmware as well okay so both is supported in this scenario okay so well, let's get started with our azure portal so as soon as we are having this all details like list of servers, domain username, Hyper V, all these details we are having will directly hop onto our portal.azure.com. Okay, so uh, once you are at portal.azure.com, uh, give me a little bit of time. I will definitely show you on Azure as well how it looks like. Um, you can search it on the Azure uh, on the portal.azure.com. Let me try to share my screen again and go on to the portal.azure.com okay just a minute window okay let me see if you guys are able to see my screen now with azure portal services yes yeah. we can so normally uh, if you have used the azure services earlier it should be here otherwise you can actually look for azure MIG and it will give you the Azure migration. Okay, so Azure migrate. Uh, you might be aware what type of uh, search keyword I'm looking for. You can also go with the complete Z U R E Azure MIG migration. It will come up on the top. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, once you are at the Azure migrate, what you need to do is you need to click on uh, what services database. All these are actually giving you the options migration goals, whether you want to go for an Azure, uh, uh, like in servers, database servers, web application or normal servers. Servers can be uh, any operating system. Uh, it can be Windows, it can be Linux, it can be non-Microsoft as well. Uh, we can also go for a only a database migration. We can have a VDI. If you're already having a virtual desktop image, you can actually directly migrate it here. We have the web application, we have the data box. Okay. How we will manage, we'll manage it with the discovered items and properties. So we'll come here later on. We'll go for the server database and applications. So once we are here, if you see, I have already created a uh, my created a project called data center migration. What you can do, you can quickly come here and create a 
subscription uh, on the subscription basically you can go ahead and create a new resource group so let's suppose i want to create a new resource group named uh, maybe i'm looking for uh, uh, dynamics 365 user group india servers maybe i want to make this just like this and go ahead and click okay okay and then uh, you can also have the same name as dynamics uh, Dynamics 365 user group INDIA. And then you can make this as uh, server. Uh, it should be always uh, onto the same. Uh, there is no relevancy on the resource group or the project name, but make sure that you are creating the resource and the projects having the same name or having some references because you there might be multiple uh, admins in your company to monitor your Azure consumption. Okay, so go and look for this geography. I told you that you need to be absolutely sure about your uh, migration, uh, the target uh, region. Okay, so let's suppose the target region is uh, US, US, make this as US, and then go ahead and create this. There is an else an advanced option. Let me show you. This advanced option talks about the public endpoint. If we make this as a private, we need to give this details, like which virtual network, which subnet it should lie on. Normally, what I have done is I have done it with the public endpoint so that there is no access related issue or there is no uh, VNet related issues uh, in my uh, projects. Okay, so go ahead and create this. So for you guys, I have already what I have done, let it create. Okay, I have already created my project as a data center. So I can, if I have created two, I can come here and look for the different data centers or even I can change the subscription. So right now it is still going on. Let's move on with the next one. Uh, once we are done with our project creation, so let's suppose earlier I have created with the data center a migration and now it is coming in. So let's suppose, um, just let me see if I'm able to see it. Let me refresh this. It does take some time and then it should be available onto here. Still refreshing, I guess. So it has been refreshed. I will go back to home, try to go back to the Azure Migrate, go back to the services, try to see if that has been created successfully. Yeah, so we have created successfully. Okay, once you are here, you have to have, if you see this, let me zoom out. You see there is an assessment tool and then migration tool. Okay, so I told you there will be two methods. Uh, I would say two steps to follow. First one is the discovery, like you discover it, uh, you build and review the business cases. Once you review and build the business cases, you analyze the dependencies and then access. Okay, so we'll move on to the uh, discovery first. So while we discover, um, you can do the discovery by using the appliances. What could be the discovery using appliances? Uh, the difference, I will just show you. And also you can give a import to the uh, CSV file. Okay, so in case you want to include the downloaded CSV template, so let me show you. If you have already downloaded and you have a lot of uh, servers, so let's suppose you are having these servers, okay? We'll see this as a template and save it across. Okay, and then let's me upload this particular template. Okay. Um, okay, so this has been done and then import. So this is something which you are trying to do it with the help of manual CSV. Uh, if you are having this format in case you are not having what you can do, you can download this and share it to the administrator teams though, or the infra infrastructure team who can actually handle and give it back to with the filled CSV file. Or you can actually extract, get an extract from the uh, VMware team or Hyper-V team so that you get the details. And once you are here, it will try to show you the import status preparing your project to import machines. Okay, so it will take some time to load. In the meantime, it is taking time We'll go ahead and duplicate this and I will try to show you on the appliance setup. 
this is one type of setup which you can actually quickly analyze and then uh, the the core objective would be on the appliance side appliance would give you more insight of your uh, of your project okay um yeah let me show you it's still loading okay yep discovery has been uploaded okay so we'll come here we'll try to explore the uh, appliances services so what does this appliance miss what is the basic difference between importing the csv and importing your appliances so importing the csv means you will go up to around uh, you can go up to around 70 uh, to 65 percent 65 to 70 percent but you will not be uh, getting more use uh, use of this what you can do on the discovery using the appliances uh, this is something which gives you the discovery and based on the discovery you can also do your application and once the uh, when the application happens you can actually migrate the system successfully so what you can do you can choose the vmware hyper v uh, vmware vsphere hypervisor or you can go with the hyper v or you can look for any other physical or any other aws gcp zen any other cloud which you are looking for so let's suppose we are looking for hyper v right now now it comes and shows that generate a project key what you can do you can quickly generate a product key based on uh, what is this needed so let's suppose i'm looking for user group indi user group ndia and then click generate so this generation will be mapped up by your uh, vhd or you can actually create a zip file so this may take some time uh, however let me go to this and show you that it has been the record has been inserted around 10 virtual machines has been uh, maybe 10 records has been inserted so we'll go back to the project try to get this project yeah and so click on the discovery we have already imported so we should have yeah so it will take around 10 minutes to get the assessment done so while it is doing we'll just wait and look for the appliances services let me show you quickly that what i have done uh, on my different project this is the project which we created just now this is the project which i have already worked on so let me show you okay so click on the discovery side and you will see that i have already created some appliances go and manage the existing appliances you will see one appliance has been registered okay so what happens with the appliance registration is uh, once you are here once you are discover i told you that there are two methods to go you can download this zip file install it on the existing virtual machine or you can upload a vhd and then try to use it so what i have done I have created a v, uh, I have created a machine and then started with my Azure Azure Migrate appliances. Okay, so I've created it and then moved to my Hyper-V host. So let me go ahead and connect it. Um, just to note that in case I'm lost connection due to my washing machine spin up, so. Don't think that the connection uh, that I'm not interested to give you the knowledge. Don't worry, I will definitely move back. Okay, so I did shut down my machine. Uh, what you need to do once once you have downloaded, I don't downloaded this file around 12 GB, and after downloading, I have just mapped it. You can quickly go ahead and create a VM like this. Let me show you. Um, you can go ahead and create a virtual machine like this. Whatever existing machines can be. Uh, you need to name it. I named it uh, deliberately on Azure Migrate Appliances. You can name it anyone. Like you name, let's suppose you want to make this uh, Azure Appliances, or you can say Appliances and then click Next. Uh, choose the Generation 2. Go for the machine uh, RAM, and then always use default switch. With the help of the default switch, you will be able to access the internet within the uh, within the uh, virtual machine. Okay, otherwise it will be an issue. You will be again lost to get the internet within the uh, virtual machine. Okay, so make sure that you are having a default switch. And now 
since we have downloaded, you can actually come here and browse it, uh, the location. Once you are done, you will be able to get your machine listed here. So I'm just creating it quickly. You will get a machine like this. OK, so right now, same thing. We have done it for you already uh, because it will take some time. So I've already done it and we have already getting connected to here. Now, um, while you open it for the first time, it will Sorry, uh, your screen is frozen actually. I don't know. I'm not able to. OK, anyone have single screen. same issue? Let uh, me, looks fine to me. I can Maybe I can see from my can see the self page. Let oh, me reshare it. Yeah, sure. Just reshare it. Yeah, it is fine. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Now, what happens with the Hyper-V? We have, I have quickly, uh, for the first time it opens, it will try to get you the uh, in within the uh, within the appliances, you will see a Azure uh, uh, Azure Migrate Appliance Configuration Manager. You don't need to open it. What happens is it will automatically open, and it will try to set up the uh, prerequisites. Also, okay. So in case this VM is under data center, you might have a as proxy within it to get into the internet. You need to set up the proxy. You need to actually set up the proxy over here right now it is all good so i'll just say it is it is okay to move ahead now what it is trying to do to sync with azure and then it will try to get a updated version of the appliances and it will check whether it is compa com compatible or not once it is done you will see that i have just pasted this migration uh, uh, key project key so let me show you from where i got uh, generally you have to go to the manage existing appliances. And once you are there, you will see an. Um, OK, so. OK, no, my bad. So I need to go to the different project and show you from where I copied. So go to the um, Dynamics 365 user group server. And then you go and look for your. Um, uh, Discovery and this discovery, you need to come here. And remember, we created the appliances. I remember creating the appliances, so this is the project key for you. Making sense? So we will not use this because this has been already. Uh, this I have already created a scenario to showcase that it is going on very smooth. Otherwise, this particular video will be eight hours long, and then there will be a lot of waiting hours so i don't want to get into that so now once you are done with once you verify this data center migration uh, the project key it you have to verify once it is verified it will show you the green checkbox and then move on to the auto discovery status and then you try to log in okay you need to copy and log in um, it may uh, i think i may have to uh, uh, recreate the session but uh, all good once we are logged in, OK, so once you're logged in, it will show you the prerequisites running and then you need to come here and look for your Hyper-V host with the help of your friendly name and the US, uh, uh, the username and the password. You need to enter that how you can actually reach the Hyper-V. OK, so this appliances, why we have given this appliances, why we have added the appliances to the Hyper-V, because to get into the same network, OK, first thing and then it will try to have the communication between the Hyper-V and then once the Hyper-V uh, or the cluster having the details, then you can actually go and discover it. So once you are having the source as Hyper-V, uh, give the username and the password, and then you should see a uh, give the uh, username, uh, add the discovery source. Let me show you the on the PPT side. So this I've already explained you and uh, we'll move on to Yep, download. Remember I said it will be six or nine GB. So we have downloaded it and then unzipped and try to map it over here. And starting services, once you are done, you will see terms and conditions. And then you move on to the copying the data center project ID. And then once you are done, you have to copy here. Once you are copied, 
you will see that it has been showing that it has been validated. After validating, you need to enter the username and the password. Username and the passcode, not the password. Okay. And then this screen will appear. I will approve uh, from my Microsoft Authenticator app. Once it is approved, it will say it is trying to uh, access the Microsoft Azure PowerShell. You need to click on continue. Once you are done, it will say that it is configuring and it will also say that what email ID you have used to validate this. Okay. Once this is done, you will you will get the uh, initialization done. Once the initialization done, you need to go and look for your Hyper-V cluster details. You need to generally, you can use the Hyper-V name, uh, just a notepad. So Hyper-V can be, let's suppose I use Dynamics 365 user group India. And then let's suppose it is a CRM uh, AX server or maybe CRM because it is having AA. So let's make this as a CRM server. So it is having a CRM server. What could be the uh, what could be its full fully qualified name? So it can be dot local dot com, or it can be um, it can be CRM server, and then the Dynamics 365 User Group India dot com. This is our domain uh, by which we are running our user group. So this can be the fully qualified name. Either you use this fully qualified name and the credentials saved, you make this as Dell, which we have saved it in the uh, last uh, image. And then this, this could be a typical username and the password. Or what you can do, you can copy this and make sure that you are having an IP. So let's suppose you have internal IP as 10.0.1.0. Uh, this, this can be also, this will also work. Once this is done, you will see a validation. Okay, so it will say, if you see, I've uh, just created this as an Hyper-V friendly name and Azure, username Azure. So to this, to give this is real resemblance, so what we can do, we, what we can do, we can do Azure. And over here, I will also put Azure. So once this is validated here, I will just try to give this Hyper-V uh, like in source, I, uh, my IP address fully qualified domain name. This is my, again, a valid domain name. Uh, I have used this aus.omeshpande.com and the port is by default by which it will communicate. So it is five, uh, 5985. And once you click on the validate, as soon as it is validated, it will show you that discovery initiated. That's the first milestone or an achievement which you get. Okay, so once this is done, you need to go and look for a uh, next, which is called discovery. You will see this as a discovery. And uh, if you are not having a database uh, on the environment, you can just disable this. Otherwise, you can click here and go for the database uh, credentials as well. Maybe you are having uh, databases like SQL or maybe MySQL. You can then use the username and the password. And then again, you can discover it them as well. You need to add the credentials over here. OK, so till now, any question? Oh, All good. Okay. There's nothing in the chat uh, below. If anyone has any question, feel free to unmute and ask. Yeah, sorry, I'm going very fast because uh, yeah. there's a lot of things to cover. <laughs> it should be fine. Um, just uh, for the SQL uh, database servers and all, it, uh, uh, credential has to be given in the same window where we gave uh, credential for the VM, right? Uh, same, no, same. it will be different. Yeah, over here you need to add. You need to enable this and add the credentials. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Because see, if you see this, this is backed up by the username and the password. And when it comes to SQL, it cannot be, uh, it cannot be on the fully qualified domain name. It can be a oh, sysadmin, yeah. admin, right? It it is yes. it may be on domain. It may not be on domain. So both the sure. ways. Okay, so once that is done, you click on discovery. Once you start the discovery, your first screen will look like this. Azure Migrate Discovery and Assessment. Let me show you on in our portal. Uh, since we, uh, I, tro I try to showcase, okay, so this is our discovery. It will look like this. Um, what happened? Discover Service 10, okay. Do I need to run the discovery again? No. Yep. Okay. So generally, 
it it will show us all 10 uh, virtual machines over here. Uh, I'm not sure why it is not showing to me, but generally it will come here. I can showcase uh, when we did it for our project. I will just try to show you. This will be the server location. Okay, so, so this will show you that what all servers we have used and it is member of uh, the group and it goes on with the dependencies of installing the uh, required installation. So this is uh, this is based on uh, uh, your Windows or Linux machine. You need to install the uh, agent. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, yeah, so this chapter is closed here. Once you do the start discovery, this VM is then not so much used, okay? It will be only used when you com come on to the discovery phase on the second uh, second phase where you want to showcase your uh, okay uh, now we move on to uh, the azure portal try to show you the groups okay so what you can do once you are once you see that your machines are available what you can do you can have look for the imported servers which we did over here we are able to see it okay what I'm going to do, I can create a name, like let's suppose I have a .NET application. So I'll just make it, it is uh, .NET, .NET, okay? And then select the VMs which are necessary. It is not mandatory to select all the servers, okay? Making sense? If you see it is having Oracle and uh, Red Hat boxes, it might be a case that you have um, CRM servers on Azure you want to move. And while you are moving, the tenancy changes. The Azure tenant is maybe uh, this. Just to make sure that you are understanding, this is our domain and we are migrating to this on Microsoft.com, okay? So this can be a different tenant. now. Maybe uh, I'm moving Oracle, so I will say. So basically they are coming in from the same setup, same tenancy because it's the same data center, multiple applications can be there. So let's suppose it is Oracle. And while we have the Azure, we want to move it, move the application in Azure. So we'll make this, make sure that it is on Azure tenancy. So it can be like this. You can make this as Oracle practice. Making sense? Similarly, a third example can be, so this will have their own subscriptions, okay? So this will also have their own subscription. Maybe we are lo looking for uh, AX or a CRM. AX, AX or CRM will make sure that it is having a resemblance of AX. Remove the Oracle one. Making sense? So this is how uh, you can have a segregation of uh, the appliances, okay? Uh, uh, segregation of the application over here. Now, once you are done, you can click create. Four servers are selected, create. So this will take some time. I will just run it to the PPTs now. Okay, so once that is done, what we need to do is the second step will follow. Okay, so once uh, this this uh, rec recovery is done, we'll move on to the dependencies to install. And once it uh, once it is done, we'll move on to. Let me give you. Uh, okay, this one I guess. No. Oh, sorry, import paste. And that's the server. You can also do in quick assessment. This assessment can be shared by shared with your management team. So let me show showcase that as well. This assessment assessment is basically that while you are on um, while you are on on premises, what is the cost, and while you move on to on premises, what could be the um, costing? Okay, going forward, so go to the assessment uh, VM V Azure Virtual Machine, and say we have imported servers, and you need to edit this. Remember to edit this. So go and edit this assessment. It is it is showing you on the best best practices which Microsoft follow, but definitely you need to review it. So what could be the target? 
So, so we choose as US, so you can go for US East or West. Uh, I normally create prefer US East actually or West. Let me see if I have East, East. Yes, this one is my preferred one. And now the storage type, I'm making this, making sure that you don't occur a lot of cost. So I'm, I skip actually, I, I don't do all this, what I do, I say, performance, not the performance base, I will say as on on-premises. This is very, very simple, straightforward. What was there on on-premises, make sure that it is having the same setup in, in the storage setup. Now what you can do, you can remove this and make sure that you are having normal hard disk or standard hard disk. It is also, sh also showing you about the saving options, what you need to do. You can have one year reserve plan, you can have three years and all those things. I will just say none to give you what could be the real time cost. Now it is showing that what type of virtual machines series you will be using. I will select all and go for the comfort factor. Comfort factor is if these machines are there, how much comfort you are in. So you can choose, you can you can pick and choose anything and I will just select one and move ahead. Right now we are, I will be showing you the pricing on the pay as you go on the USD dollar. Uh, there is no discount uptime. We are making this for 31 days and 24 hours. Okay. You can also calculate based on 20 hours because we know we are now working 20 hours or 22 hours. Sorry, 22 days, my bad. And then make sure that you are lowering it to eight hours a day. Okay. Uh, now go ahead with the Azure benefit. In case you already have Azure licenses, remember this, if you already have Windows licenses and you want to have the same benefit of uh, the on-premises license to Azure, you can make sure that you are, it is yes. And then uh, security is by default, you need to have and then save it. Once you are saved, go and select the servers. Maybe I need to do a assessment for all the servers, I will say, uh, select all, try to create the assessment name uh, since we are doing it for the all servers. So we'll say all servers and uh, you can have the, make it as assessment to remember what you have done. Timings running out. I know this is not actually one hour. We have to give more time to this. So this is, once you are done, you can choose existing also in case you have already created a group, go ahead and click on review and create assessment. So once we are done with the review and create assessment, create assessment on the final go. So this is in between the first, first discovery and the second, uh, second discovery. That means it has two steps actually. One is the discovery, the second one is your, um, the replication. Okay, so we are still on the first one. And uh, in between first one, you need to showcase the assessment. So right now the assessment has been done. Yeah, being computed, it would take few minutes to ready. So while it is getting ready, let me go back and showcase the second step. Okay, so once this is done, um, you will go ahead and click on the migration tool, discover. And look for the Hyper-V choose the proper data center, maybe East US and calculate it, create resources. So once this is created, it will it will try to uh, build up because uh, you will be, uh, this will be creating actually the, uh, uh, the service vault, uh, the key vault basically, uh, the vault services basically with to replicate the servers. So basically from the on-premises, the servers will be in, uh, in Azure, a key vault, and then from there, it will finally migrate to your resources, resource group. So that's how it has been like a midway properly we in Azure we call staging. So that's the staging where it will be kept. Okay, so just it is trying to do the deployment. Once it is done, it will look like this. Okay, so it will have, you need to go back to your uh, Hyper-V host go ahead and try to install the connectors. Once the connector is installed, it will showcase that one has been connected and your registration finalization can be started. Once this is started, we will see this second migration modernization, wherein we can actually go ahead, look for the replication. Once the replication is done, we go and look for the testing of the migration. 
uh, testing of the migration means uh, it, it will give you option to test the migration, like to access the server, look at the application, whether it is working or not, and then go on to the migration. Okay, so this will be, we'll coming back to this shortly. Give me a minute. Let me go back to the Azure. Where we are, yep. Okay, so you need to download, okay? It will give you the download files, okay? The migration services. You need to go to the Hyper-V host, sorry. You need to go to the Hyper-V host. Right now, if you see, this is my Hyper-V host. I need to RDP my main server. It can be uh, it can be Hyper-V host, any main server. So this is my main server. So since this is my main server, which I'm trying to give you the demo, I need to install it on the local machine. For you, those who are on uh, on premises uh, data center, so you may be seeing the host, okay? So these servers are on single host. It can be a similar concept where you have, so let's suppose you have AD server. Right now, the host is, uh, the host is your laptop. AUS and let's suppose I have another. Uh, so these services are still on all the servers, but it can be your AX servers are on a different uh, host, maybe Hyper V host two, and similarly CRM servers are on Hyper V uh, Hyper uh, host. Actually, it is it's. Goes not ghost for hyper v v and make it host. So it can be on two, it can be on three. Uh, generally, it is based on the request. Okay, so let's suppose the request is finalized and given to you. You will create all the servers related to to the same or a different host. If it is bifurcated, then it will be a very too complex for you to segregate all this because you have to go a lot of discoveries again and again, and then you need to break the Azure. Uh, uh, services and then re reinstall those uh, appliances, all those things will come in. Okay, so right now I was telling you that this is my Hyper-V. Hyper -V. Once we have the downloaded the appliances settings, we need to install it again. Once we are done, we'll see our services, which will be connected like this, which I was showing you. So I think I think we will be in a position to showcase the uh, delivery. Uh, the I think it was um, it was this assessment. Yep, assessment. So let me go back to this and let me see if the assessment is available for you guys to showcase or not. I think I think it should be ready. Let me go for the overview. Uh, okay. I think the assessment should be here. Yep. So assessment is ready. Go ahead and click on the assessment. Yeah, this is the thing which I wanted to show you. So we calculated based on eight hours. Okay, eight hours a day and 22 working days. So if you can see this, all virtual machines are ready for our migration and saving on the hybrid benefit is around 235 dollars hybrid is means basically uh, you wanted to carry the same licenses from your azure uh, from your uh, data center to azure that's the azure benefit you are getting and then the monthly cost you will be getting around compute value on the compute sorry on the compute you will be getting around uh, you will be getting around on the single compute of the all machines, you will be getting 200, $270. And on the storage, you will be getting 64. And then on the security, you will be getting $32 per month billing. And it also gives you the storage monthly cost estimation cost, which is already shown here. It will show you the monthly uh, cost estimate in Azure. Now, this report can be actually exported, okay? You can export this and share it to your management. It will look like it is. It, it will look like very good. Okay, so let me showcase that as well. Yep, 
so it will give you the what project you are done what is the uh, machine ready uh, total machine accessed all those things and then it will give you the nice graphics as well uh, it will also give you the details on what our machines are ready what recommendation this size they are using uh, virtual machine this virtual machine size what is the machine name and all those things and then disk also what all this has been accessed it will show you and then assessment properties it will show you that what we have selected so it is like a very good nice summary for management team or project management team or a finance team who, who will approve this project so uh, i think uh, this is uh, this is the last point which i will tell you uh, the next slide so once everything is done like replicate test migration and uh, final migration has been done you will see that your vm is migrated while your vm is migrated you will see that there is no public ip okay so that's the only the private ip now once you are done with this what you need to do you need to actually go on to the vm whatever vm you have migrated okay I cannot show you the complete scenario. Actually, it's a limitation on my subscription as well. So I think all the machines are, I will quickly deploy a machine. Give me two minutes. And uh, it can be on my anything. Maybe I want to use the Dynamics 365 F4 server and make it to East US availability zone no and we'll make this as windows server 2022 come on okay so we are looking for windows server and which version should be 2022 yeah this one and then we'll move on to my, uh, yeah, this is all good. Uh, any higher or lower version you can choose. Make sure that you have as your user, as a username. It can be anything. This is my favorite password. Just try to put in, yep. And then, yeah, that's the port. I even I can make this as no. When you actually, when your machines are migrated, it will have no outbound or inbound port because it's not having NSG. So let's see what happens. Go to the next, ignore. We'll make sure that it is having a standard one. Rest is good. Networking, I will just say that I don't need any public IP. I will say none and then move on. So I'm just showing, showcasing you that what could be a replicated how a replicated vm will look like now the people out there who joined this call might be looking for uh, the question that how ax migrated without uh, ad or uh, crm cannot work without ou similarly business central can actually work but what about the navision which is having the nst server uh, ssl servers how those can be configured so basically once you move you need to actually uh, I told you in the beginning that you need to have a local username and the password. So that is how you actually create the uh, Active Directory in Azure and then rejoin all the machines to the newly created domain and then you re, uh, reinitialize your all the uh, AOS uh, setups and all those things you need to do it actually manually. So this is something a little bit complex but it makes sure that everything with the complete version of your old operating system is migrated as a lift and shift. With the help of the lift and shift, what happens is it is whatever you have here, it will be replicated here. Okay, so you don't have to give a pain on your .NET version, your kernel versions, your all those things. It will be, if you start installing it from the scratch, you know all those small softwares which is required as a prerequisite which will not be available for you to download so from where you will download so that could be a case wherein this lift and shifts make sense to you okay so this is how it has been uh, done let me create it
Okay, so I think uh, we can open the forum for the question answers while it is deploying. We are good. Thank you, Mesh. Yes, uh, there is one question in the. Prabin will come to you uh, just a minute, uh, but keep uh, please raise your hands. I'll take the uh, I'll unmute you guys in the sequence. Uh, there's a question from Mala. Uh, can we also migrate AD if it's available as VM? Yes, you can migrate the Active Directory also, which is a VM. The only thing is you need to know that if your if your virtual machine is a is a Active Directory, you cannot add a user local user on that. You need to start. You you need to have a commands to add it, and then after the command, you need to actually uh, give them the uh, access uh, as a local administrator, and then also you on top of it, you need to give them the access as a RDP uh, RDP member like a group member policy, you know, that will be uh, there in post. You can migrate. Thank we have migrated much. that. Go to the services. Yep. Next question, please. Rabin, feel free to, feel free to unmute uh, yourself. Uh, yeah, I have two questions actually. One, uh, when we take the assessment, right, it's a point of time assessment, right? maybe the server is less used at that time. You know, the resources mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, uh, not re really up to the, you know, full uh, use. So if at that time, assessment time, the resources are less, and then we give the same assessment to Azure, right? So when it comes to peak time, how does it manage that? I mean, because it chooses, it chooses the workload according to the uh, point of time resources, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true question. Actually, good question. So what you can do, you can still go to the setting. And give them a minimum management, give them the minimum load. OK, so go to the settings. And remove this 2020 make there make sure that it is 31 days and make sure that it is having a 24 hours bracket. So give them oh. the maximum and the minimum and then you are safe. OK. Okay, my second okay. question. Uh, thank you so much. Um, my second question is, I mean, uh, in hybrid model, right? Once uh, we can replicate our AD to the Azure environment. So uh, once we, uh, uh, I mean, um, have extend our AD to the Azure environment, do we need to have uh, change the settings in VMs as well once we import? Because it will uh, have the you... same authentic. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you are you are actually on the correct path. But the thing is when it you might not have understanding on AX or how CRM works. So they work on only on the Active Directory, not the Azure Active Directory. OK, if you make the syncing with the help of the on premises, the AD Connect and uh, the Azure Active Directory. However, over here, the scenario is we need to migrate everything from on premises to cloud. Okay, so no AD, no AD sync happening on on premises. That's the reason okay. you need to break that AD, create a new AD here, and then use it. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's all. No problem. Okay, so now Thanks. the main part. May, now the main part. Sorry, we will take the questions in five minutes later. So now, how to add the public IP? And if you see on the networking, there is no port to connect. There's no NSG. NSG is there, but there's no port. So we'll quickly hop on to the IP address and uh, make sure that we have the public IP addresses. Uh, create a IP address new. Okay. And what was the server name which we created as uh, Dynamics 365 user? Okay. So we'll copy um, this one. I think we created on here. And uh, Okay, I think it is the same one. So we'll make sure that we are having this correct name. Let me go ahead and copy the correct name of it. Um, the VM, I normally do that. Uh, what happened? Yes, FO server. And I will make this preceded by IP. Okay, and then we are good to go. View and create. 
Uh, also remember for everyone, you should have a proper tagging also. Right now I have not used it, but you can come here and then do a tagging that it is a migration project so that the costing is, you know, from where these costings are hitting your Azure pocket. Okay, so go ahead and do a validation. Go ahead and create it. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, probably five more minutes and then we are done. Yep, so it has been deployed now. Yep, and uh, we are going to the home. And we go with the IP address, which has been created. It has been deployed successfully. We got the IP address. Now there will be an option to associate. So go ahead and click on to the associate. And then it's not a load balancer, it's a network interface. So go ahead and choose the network interface. Um, I think it is still loading. Let me refresh this. Okay, if it is not available, go no problem. Go to the server. Go to the networking. And you need to click on to the connected network interface. So both way can be done. If it is not visible, come here and then go to the network uh, security group. It is already there, DNS. It's already there, IP configuration. Go ahead and make this as a add. Okay, so it is not, still not taking. Um, let me go to the virtual network. Okay, so this is the virtual network which we created. Go to the connected devices. Okay, I think, did it got deployed? Yep. Generally it should be showing the network and then over here, we should see the network uh, uh, NSG, which we have created all the NIC card, which we have created. So it should actually link up here. No network interface found for the selected subscription on the central US. Give me a minute, I think. I think it is not central. It should be under, it should be under different time, different zone actually. That could be case. Yes, East US, yeah. Okay, so what I need to do, I need to create a new IP. Give me a minute. Just create a quick one. I think it was, yep. So I need to change it. It got defaulted and make it IP2 or one, anything, create. Create, okay, so it has to be on the same zone. Otherwise it won't be able to uh, do it. Yeah, I normally troubleshoot on the fly. <laughs> so that's the case, okay, so it is done. Takes two minutes more. Anyone know how we can RDP the server? So I know it has been created. If I have these servers already, I have all the servers and this server is not IP having the public IP. How I can connect to this server? Anyone, any guesses? Anyone? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so go and look for the association. It should now appear. Yep, it is appearing. Okay, so click here and okay. Okay, so to the answer, uh, to the question to the answer is, you if you see here, all the VMs are having actually on the same uh, 
private IP range. So what you can do, you can log in any VM. From their VM, you can actually connect to this. So this is something called uh, jump up server. Now people are named naming this as a jump up server. So that's the jump up server configuration. Now let me refresh. We have got the public IP. Go ahead and look for the public IP. And uh, we have not white listed our 3389. So go to the networking, go to the NSG, and then add a rule. Okay, so add a rule over here. Um, it can be also done from here. Add an inbound rule. Make sure that we are having these services as RTP and this port will appear automatically. Add it. And then you are good to connect this machine. So go to the connect. This has been already added. It will just try to validate whether this port is available or not. This machine is up or not. And then it will give you the green signal. Let me download it. Once it is downloaded, go to the download and then try to port requestees are not met. I think let me refresh this. Sometime you might need to restart the VM, but it should it should work. Yep, on the other screen it worked. I just need to give the Azure user and then go for the password. Enter. Thank you for sharing the link, Neeraj. So Neeraj just shared a link where Microsoft is uh, doing AIM for Dynamics migrations. Yes. OK, so floor is open for any questions you might have. I want to say a great demo, Mesh. You really went too deep into Azure, really to the core level of properties and running the whole process and within an hour, it's really something commendable. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. It is asking me to uh, password not correct, so I'll just quickly reset it. This is how you reset the password. Make sure that you are having the correct username. Uh, my password is a little bit confusing, one, two, three. Trying to reset it. Huh? <laughs> I keep on forgetting my password, which is favorite, but actually on Azure it is like it does not match and all those errors it comes up. Yeah, so demo is completed from my end successfully. So in case you have any doubt, basically we were looking at uh, once the servers are migrated, you may not have the proper IP. So we have given the IP. We attached it to the the attach the um, IPs as well, and also we attach the NSG uh, created a rule. One thing to remember is if you are having a lot of servers, so let's suppose you have multiple servers, like ten servers joining in one server. Make sure that in case you are looking for an Active Directory uh, creation of the VM, you need to actually create every all the machines in single in single way net okay that's it key takeaway always remember if you are making all these applications to azure active directory uh, sorry to the active directory connection make sure that you are having a single vnet okay these vnet addresses can be given to your uh, vms so that you are able to ping their servers and then make them as a dns to the servers. OK, so this that time the DNS will act as this the private IP will act as a DNS server. So that means if let's suppose this UP East is the AD server. This IP, this private IP will be listed in their DNS. OK, so I think we can cover it later on on the networking side. Definitely. That calls for another session, Omesh. <laughs> yep. All right, all right. If anyone has any question or anyone wants to unmute and say something, feel free to do that. Uh, I'll just take a few more minutes towards the end just to talk about what's the next session.
Yeah, thank you, Rachit, yeah. for hosting me. Thank you, Umesh, for doing such a great preparation and presentation. Really, thank you. And thanks everyone who has joined. So guys, just a quick note. Uh, next session in our group is happening on 31st of August, and I'm very excited because I will be presenting on this forum and uh, I'll be uh, presenting it along with Deepak Agrawal, who is based in UK. He's a, a Microsoft MVP, and we will be talking about uh, how we can use Azure DevOps to supercharge your finance and operations implementation. So we'll discuss all the nice uh, and great things about Azure DevOps and what are the new tools available, how we can do automation. So feel, uh, please register for the session. Uh, we will be sharing it on our LinkedIn handles and uh, join the session when it happens. Uh, you can also scan these codes if you are interested to speak in over this group. Uh, feel free to scan these codes, submit your session request, and we will be more than happy to organize it. If you have any feedback, scan the code and submit your ideas, feedback, and we will uh, incorporate that. So with that, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, keep supporting us. Please join our group on the links which I have shared. Uh, like us on YouTube, uh, join us on the Dynamics community, and support us on LinkedIn, and uh, stay uh, tuned, and join us for future sessions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Umesh. Thank, thank you, Rajit. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Umesh. Thank you, Rajit. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Umesh and Rajit. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Umesh. Thank you, Rajit. 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 Thank you,